Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Christopher Villatsen. Uh, I'm going to talk about what I've uh, worked on the, for the last few months uh, as part of the uh, Intro CPS application work. And, and I've worked with uh, the modernization of this application. And I would uh, focus on in this talk about how we moved from Angular 2.0.4 RC onto Angular 7.2, sorry, uh, Angular 7.2. And um, we wanted to do this because we have the uh, the cloud twin, which is uh, at this stage, uh, and we wanted to make sure that this, the system was s secure and the, the dependencies were up to date. So coming into this uh, project, uh, it was uh, where you have to update the underlying uh, framework for the UI. It seemed important to understand uh, the application. So um, I borrowed a slide here from uh, from the paper migrating into the the into CBS application into the cloud, and as we can, as we know, the project is an uh, Angular and Node.js project uh, that uses Electron, which uses uh, in turn Chromium to build a desk desktop application. So we see here that the application uses uh, Gulp as a build tool. We know that it uses Webpack as a packaging tool. It's not shown here in the in the slide, but um, these two um, tools were had a great impact on the work that we've done, or at least it had some impact on on the way we, we, we worked through this. Uh, so I'll talk about this shortly when we when we get to it. So this talk is going to be about the update and, and the discoveries made, we made on, on the way. So from when I got to the project, uh, this was uh, our, our stance. So we had about 268 uh, vulnerabilities, a lot of uh, high vulnerabilities and, and a few lower ones, even some critical ones. And when we looked at the uh, outdated dependencies, uh, we had a bunch of outdated dependencies, even a few abandoned ones and a lot of uh, deprecated versions which weren't supported anymore. Um, so we started by uh, updating all of these smaller um, vulnerabilities to make sure that all the, that the base that we had we were very uh, comfortable with. And uh, then we started to look at how could we solve this problem and how could we update it um, in, a, in a secure way. So we started looking at what had been do done already and Tula had worked on, on a few branches and we used that as inspiration on how would we uh, do this and how would we get on with the uh, with this problem. And then we used a tool called uh, Angular Update Web Tool, which you can see on, on the right here. Um, it's a tool that uh, Angular and the Angular team themselves uh, has uh, developed. So this creates a, a seamless way to update it. Um, but one thing that you have to know when you update an Angular project, and especially one at this size, is that some along the way, or at, at some points, uh, when you update from one version to another, some of the major updates have quite a big leap. Um, and there's there are some steps that you need to be aware of. Um, some of them are from the very early stages, from uh, Angular 2.0.4 RC onto Angular 2. There's a, a big jump in how Angular is uh, using modules and, and components, and we worked on that for a while. And then from um, Angular 2 onto 4, um, a lot of the forms in, in the internal forms structure of, of Angular has just changed, and, and we did a lot of work on that as well. Uh, and then from about round uh, four to five, and even uh, a little bit into uh, Angular uh, six, the new um, Angular C uh, CLI system uh, went online, and there's a lot of updates into the internal building system of Angular. Um, so this is where we uh, had a lot of issues with uh, Webpack and Gulp, or not a lot of issues, but we had a lot of questions about how we solving this and how we're building the, the application and are we doing it in the best possible way. Uh, so we looked into to all of this and, and worked around for, for a bit and found that we could update um, these uh, external dependencies but keep them uh, without conforming to the Angular update uh, or the Angular internal build system and we are quite happy where we are at the moment. Um, so at and, and at that point we went on to Angular 6 and Angular 7, uh, where we found that Angular is updating the way that uses um, RxJS, which is a uh, well that's not important, and neither is the the HTTPS. But we 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 saw this update and we were quite aware of it, and we looked into is is this a problem for uh, for the uh, application, and we didn't find anything particular uh, troublesome. 
we did, however, find that we are using uh, we were using a lot of dependencies uh, onto the HTTP requests and 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 so and that sort. And we all it was all being used in the traceability uh, system or a feature of the application, uh, which started the discussion is how we're we using traceability and and what is the importance of it. And we found that. Um, with the, the traceability, we were ha having a lot of dependencies and a lot of un unsupported dependencies in, in that part of the, the, the system that we thought of uh, were uh, not really that important. So we decided to deprecate the, that, that version of, of um, traceability for the application um, and remove it uh, from, from the current version. Um, so besides, uh, the, the, the big stuff in, in Angular and, and and all that, and we can discuss that in further detail if you want. But uh, there are some external parts as well that we were quite interesting with uh, with updating, and that uh, came with the, the Electron version. At the start, we were at Electron uh, four, uh, sorry, uh, 1.4, and we are now at uh, Electron 4, where we want to maybe even go beyond that. But we're not in that direction at the moment. We wanted to focus on uh, Angular version 7.2. Um, but yeah, we, we worked on the Electron update as well, and we have the code for continuing that uh, if that is something that we want to, to do in the future. So where are we now? For the current version of uh, the Angular project, we are now at 10 uh, vulnerabilities, uh, which is a great uh, a decrease from the 268 we had from the beginning. We are at a, around 44 outdated dependencies. Um, a lot of these dependencies are updated from where they were at the beginning. So even though they, they are outdated or set as outdated, they are supported and they are not abandoned completely, which we had a lot of uh, at the beginning. Um, and we are also at the current version of Angular uh, around 7.2, which is allowed with the cloud version, which is where we want to be, uh, because this gives us the opportunity to more seamlessly align the functionality from this version and the desktop version and the cloud version. Um, and so for the future for this uh, application, um, we, we, I have a few things on my wish list, um, and I know there's a lot to be done for the application, and we can do a lot of good for for it. And this is just a few of my points that that I would like for the future. Uh, this is the folder structure. I think is uh, could be really important to update. Uh, we have a current um, version or a, a sort of a wish for it, and this is as you can see on the right uh, how we are uh, designing it at the moment, where we want to. Uh, disconnect the Angular and the uh, Electron to make it more seamless with the transaction from the cloud and and, and the desktop version. And then we want to look into uh, some of the functionality that is cobbled together, that we have some global functions and features that we might want to look at if we can decouple that even more to make also those parts of the system um, move seamlessly to the cloud version and and for other functionalities as well. And then of course the uh, the Electron 8, uh, which is sort of um, my little idea for the for the application because I see that as a as a great opportunity to have the the Chromium driver which Electron uses to be updated to the latest version. But yeah, that's just my wish list. And this is that I, that's my talk as well.